Hello students, welcome back to the next video on biasing and stabilization. Myself, Mujin Mittal Roy, in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering in Jamtech, Gautamata. In the previous lecture, in the previous video rather, we have covered the stabilization and biasing need. This is the need of biasing. Why do we need the biasing? And basically it is done in order to stabilize the key point at the middle of the load line. What is the load line? How do we draw it? What are the different regions of the characteristics? That all we have covered in the previous video related to this topic, biasing and stabilization. Now moving on further on this topic, we have the next factor which is called stability factor. Uh, as I mentioned you that in previous video we uh, explained about the quality of Q factor, operating factor or, or the Q factor which should lie always at the middle of the load line. But due to various factors such as leakage current, temperature, VBE, beta, because of all these factors, the Q point shifts. And this shifting of the Q point results in inappropriate output or distorted output. So we need to have stabilization technique in order to make the key point stable at the middle of the load line. Hence we study a factor called stability factor which will decide the stability of the cue point and the circuit which provides best stability factor is considered as the best biasing method. So uh, here is the stability factor. So the stability factor is a measure of stability provided by a particular biasing circuit and it indicates the degree of change in operating point due to variation in temperature. Since there are three temperature dependent variables, there are three stability factors. So the three different stability factors are defined. Uh, first is S equal to del IC with respect to del ICO that means the change in collector current with respect to change in leakage current keeping VBE and beta constant. Uh, another factor is S dash determined as change in collector current with respect to change in VBE considering leakage current and beta constant. And the third factor is S double dash which indicates change in collector current with respect to change in uh, beta considering VPE and leakage current constant. So all these terms are defining the stability provided by a particular biasing method. If these S factors are good means the biasing is good for good biasing the S value should be minimum. So here we can note that ideally stability factor should be perfectly zero. That means there should not be any shift or change in the collector current or in the output current with respect to temperature, leakage current, beta factor, VBE. But practically it should have a value as small as possible. So smaller the value of S, better the stability provided by a particular circuit. Now we have uh, to determine the expression for stability factor so that we can derive from IC equal to okay, IC equal to IC majority plus ICEO uh, majority. So from here we can derive that uh, ICEO is equal to ICBO upon 1 minus alpha. ICEO is the leakage current in common emitter configuration and ICBO is the leakage current in common base configuration where alpha and beta are the uh, current gain or amplification factors of common base and common emitter configurations. Okay, so uh, if we derive the leakage current of ICEO and ICBO, they are related as ICEO equal to 1 plus beta ICBO or IC equal to beta IB plus 1 plus beta ICBO. So uh, here ICBO changes by delta ICBO and IB is changed by delta IB, IC changes by delta IC. So delta IC equal to beta into delta IB that means in the second equation in the lower equation in this equation we are putting 
delta IV in place of IV, delta ICBO in place of simple ICB and we divide it by delta IC. So after we divide it and simplify it and arrange it in the form of del IC upon del ICBO, we get S equal to 1 plus beta upon 1 minus beta del IB upon del IC. So stability factor, the generalized form of stability factor depends on not only beta factor but the factor which is uh, showing the change in base current with respect to change in collector current. So this is a very important uh, equation or formula for determining the stability factor. Next, so after de defining the various stability factors, we have to uh, consider different biasing circuits, so biasing networks that are in our curriculum. So there are three particular type of biasing network that we have to study in our syllabus and these are number one is fixed bias circuit, then collected to base bias circuit and then voltage divider or self bias circuit. So the very first type of biasing circuit is fixed bias circuit. It is also called base resistance method because a resistor is connected at the base along with the resistance at collector which is always present in order to limit the collector current. So now we will apply KVL at the input board. So KVL is VCC equal to IBRP plus VBE. And from here we will derive the value of IB. IB equal to VCC minus VBE upon RB. Where VBE is the voltage at the emitter base junction. Uh, in case of forward bias base junction for silicon transistor it is taken as 0 0.7 volt. Or in ideal case we can assume it to be 0. So uh, depending on the numericals and depending on the given condition we can assume it to be 0 0.7 volt so uh, in ideal case in order to derive the relationship we are considering it to be zero therefore IB equal to VCC upon RB. Now VBE is very very small with respect to VCC as I mentioned you it is 0.74 silicon and VCC is the collector bias which is fixed RB is the resistor uh, at the base which is also having a fixed value therefore the ratio of the two brings out a fixed value of current and that is why the circuit is named as fixed bias. So after justification of the circuit, uh, circuit's name, we will apply now KVL at output board. And for that, we will apply KVL like VCC equal to ICRC plus VCE. And from here, we will define or rather derive the value of VCE, where VCE comes out to be VCC minus ICRC. So from these two equations we get IC equal to VCC minus VCE upon RC. So the basic aim or motive of the circuit is to determine the value of IC. And once we derive the value of IC then we can derive the value of del IB upon del IC. That means change in base current with respect to leakage current. So from equation 1 which is uh, given here from equation 1 uh, we can see that base current is not depending on collector current so therefore change in base current with respect to change in collector current is 0 so del IV upon del IC equal to 0 and if we put this value here we get S equal to 1 plus beta so since beta is a high value so S factor is again a high value now S dash equal to uh, del IC upon del VBE uh, and IC equal to IC majority plus IC EO majority and from here we get IC equal to beta IB plus IC BO. Now IC becomes equal to beta IB plus 1 plus beta IC BO and when we substitute this value we get IC equal to beta equal to into VCC minus VBE upon RB plus 1 plus beta ICBO. So from here also we get a certain value of IC. And when we uh, differentiate this IC with respect to VBE, we get the value of S dash which is again minus beta upon RB. 
So again, it is depending on beta factor. It is directly proportional to beta. So it is again a high C, and which is not at all a desired value. Then we come to S double dash. To derive that, we know that S double dash is delta I C upon delta I B, now delta beta. And from here, S double dash comes out to be nearly equal to I B. And uh, I B is a very small value, so S double dash is relatively small. And it is also I C upon beta, and beta comes in denominator, so it makes S double dash smaller. So from these results, we can conclude that uh, S double dash equal to uh, I C upon beta, uh, uh, and S dash is minus beta upon R B. So if we uh, multiply one plus beta and divide one plus one plus beta in S double dash, we get S double dash equal to I C S upon beta into one plus beta. So these are the standard relations of S S. Dash and S double dash, which will be asked directly to derive and to show the fixed bias method, or they may be asked in the form of numerical. So now we should know what are the advantages and disadvantages of fixed bias method. So the simplest advantage is that it is a simple circuit, and the operating point can be fixed anywhere in the active region by varying the value of R B. So it provides flexibility also. But the drawback is that the thermal stability provided by the circuit is not very good, so the Q point shifts. Now we have a numerical for a fixed bias method. Resistance R B uh, is to be determined. Beta is uh, uh, using silicon transistor. Beta value of 100. Yeah, beta is given as 100. VCC 10 volt, DC bias condition R, VC E equal to 5 volt, and IC equal to 5 milli ampere. So these are the given parameters, and we have to determine RB, RC, and IB. So the simplest way is to apply KVL at the input port, and then KVL at the output port, and using the relation IC equal to beta IB. So here also, firstly, they have applied KVL at the output port. From there, uh, they have determined RC. Then To find I B, we know the relation I C equal to beta I B, and beta is given to us. Uh, <coughs> beta is given to us. I C is known to us, so we can define I B. Then uh, we can apply K B L input port, and we can find the value of R B. We should uh, we should <coughs> note it that the value of R B comes out to be very high. After that, we have next method, which is collector to base bias method. Why is it called collector to base bias method? Because there is a resistance connected from collector to its base. Feedback resistance connected from collector to base. So, if the current flowing in the base region is I B, coming from the uh, collector is I C, then the total current coming at this node is I B plus I C. This is the Most important condition or uh, most important criteria for considering this particular circuit. Now again, the simple mathematical concept is used that applying KVL at input port and KVL at output port. So KVL at output port will give us VC E equal to VCC minus ICRC minus IBRB, and from input KVL at input we get IB equal to VCC minus VCE minus IBRC upon RC. So from here we get the value of IC, which is beta IB plus ICBO, and uh, if we get the value of IC, we can derive delta IB upon delta IC. So if we derive delta IB upon delta IC as minus RC upon RC plus RB and put it value this in the value of S, we get the S as Given in this block and box, and which is better compared to the fixed bias method. So it is again almost similar to that, but the two point is stiff. With this, I would like to conclude my uh, topic on biasing, need of biasing and stabilization, where we studied two different types of stabilization networks, which are fixed bias and collector to base bias. So the collector to base bias is again flexible, simple, and S factor is also one plus V 
beta but it will give you a stable key point thank you so much